Well, hello, everybody. As you will see, I have a very dear friend of mine who's also a very avid user of our health and emotions, our palace of possibilities, our EFT, our OEFT, optimal EFT, and so on. That's Gabriel Rutten, who also has medical training as an MD. Say hello, Gabriel. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. Gabrielle and I also uh, recently co-authored a book. She wrote most of it called um, EFT, uh, Official EFT from A to Z. And it's over your left shoulder. If I, there we go. Okay. So I'll have me give you a little plug for the book first. All right. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> but we want to get into a couple of topics here because I'd like to have you help me emphasize something. Okay. And that has to do with the value of our brain, the human brain, as a pharmacy. And I, I saw an interesting photograph. I was talking about this before we recorded. I, I want to talk about it a little bit. Most of us think of a pharmacy as a place we go for meds that the doctor describes and prescribes, and, and we take the meds for whatever the disease is and so on. But this photo that I saw was a photo of a... Um, I guess you call it a roadside food stand. You know, they had bananas and pineapples and all kinds of, you know, carrots and celery and all kinds of natural foods. And at the top of it, it didn't say Joe's food stand. <laughs> what it says was pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. What is it? place because you know at least in the american diet there's a whole bunch of stuff that isn't really that kind of thing okay and in fact properly used it is together with the actions of the brain a pharmacy and it's a good one and i know you've got views on it views on that but let me let me step into this for a moment because it's something really important for our listeners and readers and so on to digest the human brain is sometimes called the perfect pharmacy. And me not being a doctor, I'm going to give an example, then have you take it from there, if you would, Gabrielle. If I'm just sitting here in my office, you know, enjoying my day and whatever, and in the door walks a big, mean, growling Bengal tiger, Okay. Well, I don't want to be here sitting in this chair. I want to get out in a hurry. And my brain immediately senses the danger. Immediately, without my asking it to do so, pumps adrenaline into my system. So I'm out of this chair and out the door in record time. I could beat any Olympic sprinter anywhere. Okay. <laughs> I'm out of here. Okay. But I didn't ask. I didn't ask for the adrenaline. I didn't ask for it. It just showed up because it was necessary. Okay. Now, our brain does that in lots of really good ways. And while our conventional health procedures tend to want to give outside medications, outside chemicals, drugs, well, for the sort of things that are bothering us, not always necessary, but I'd like I'd like you to talk about that. Would you please? Yes. So um, indeed, your your brain um, helps you prepare for fight and flight. So this is called the stress reaction, the sympathetic stress reaction, and it just you know you we uh, your audience probably knows uh, adrenaline and cortisol. Those are stress-related hormones. So it just readies the body to do what you just described to get out of there because of the Bengal tiger. Um, the opposite also is organized in your body um, if you use you know, the proper pharmacy, like the food stand with the nice bananas and tomatoes and, and healthy food stubs, if you do EFT. So what we're talking about is the opposite of the stress reaction, which is the relaxation response. Then a complete other set of chemicals will circulate in your body, which relaxes you, which makes sure that you're in, in balance, you're in a healthy state. And so these chemicals that are, are partly you know, uh, organized through the brain are very important. The stress 
related ones to survive or to increase your possibility of surviving. But the other ones, like um, serotonin, like endorphins, like uh, dopamine, you, uh, you know, these kinds of, of drugs, of the, uh, the natural drugs of the brain and the body, help you to be in a healthy state. And that's massively important. Because if you well, want to be in balance in a healthy state, though you need those to circulate. Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention about the food stand and called the pharmacy was it was it was giving you things that you can ingest, you know, to help your body do what it's supposed to do to survive and have good health and so on. But among the things that are there for you to buy are not uh, positive emotions. Okay, they're not there. Uh, so, so, so we're we're usually carrying around some form of guilt, anger, resentment, you know, some kind of something's bothering us, some worry, some doubt, and so on. And so that is causing our brain to start creating some negative, that's my term, make negative chemistry in the system. If they could sell that and people could buy happy thoughts, <laughs> um, yep. Um, or, or thoughts that, or, or things that got rid of all the other stuff we tend to carry around, even if it's subconscious and we're not aware that we're angry at, you know, Aunt Sue for what she did at age six or something like that. Okay. Um, if they could sell that, then they'd have a really good pharmacy, if you will. Okay. But they don't. So I mean, you're going to say something, but let me just finish this one little thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If we're spending our time, even if we're eating the best of foods, all right, um, but we're dwelling on because we're still angry at so and so for whatever they did or whatever age it was, and we still feel guilty about this and we're worried about that and so on. Um, those are the not so happy thoughts that are also poisoning the system. If we instead watched funny movies, <laughs> instead of war war movies or crime movies or suspense movies or whodunit yes. movies and stuff like that if we did that instead ah uh, we're having a lot of positive stuff come in and that's what we're trying to teach with the palace of possibilities and our eft and oeft and so on you know antidotes if you will to that kind yes. of thinking now you were going to say something i'm sorry for interrupting I was going to say exactly the same. I was going to say there's a whole industry that uh, tries to uh, sell you uh, happy thoughts, namely, uh, you know, uh, films that that make you laugh. Not the not the the war ones, not the the uh, horror ones, but there's a whole industry that also tries to uh, um, provide a good time where you can have a good laugh. Laughing is is immensely important. It brings out the uh, the good stuff in your body the serotonin the same the yeah, exactly dopamine yeah. stuff like that oxytocin um same goes for what you just said that if you walk around with these negative thoughts or you know you're triggered on a daily basis because of, of negative things and worries and all that that's where i think eft has an important role to play because if you use eft be that either tapping or uh, working with the unseen therapist, optimal EFT, you can bring your body from a state of stress because any negative emotion, any negative thought uh, basically activates the stress response to a state of relaxation. And that's exactly the state you want to be in because then the good stuff is circulating in your body. That's where, where healing takes place. That's where relaxation happens and uh, you will feel peaceful and at ease. And that's the good stuff. So that's where EFT plays an important role as far as I'm concerned. Well, there's an interesting book. It was written decades ago by a fellow by the name of, American fellow by the name of Norman Cousins. It was called Anatomy of an Illness. And mm -hmm. basically he, he was not a doctor, okay? Um, but he had a, a, a uh, ailment of the collagen, your connective tissues throughout the body and so on. And it was deteriorating and he was, you know, very arthritic and couldn't move much of anything and basically bedridden and 
and the medical profession didn't have any answer for him except for some drugs to help with the symptoms and and so on but he wasn't buying that and through his own research he thought well to parrot what you're saying although he wasn't using those terms why don't i just have my body naturally create healing chemicals and so while you don't always have to laugh at every moment that helps big time but to stay away from you know negative thinking of any kind is going to be good so he wanted so what he did was he just got a bunch of at the time what were very funny movies and he'd run them over and over and over again and sit there and watch them and laugh and laugh and laugh and, and so he got more movies and and while he didn't get, as I recall the story, completely over his collagen thing, it was like 90% and he could run around and do whatever he wanted to do. And he died eventually of some other disease other than the collagen one. Yes. And so that gets us to a topic I want to ask you about, and one which I emphasize quite a bit in the health and emotions part of Palace of Possibilities. And that is, to me at least, I have to ask the question, what causes diseases? And as I emphasize in what I was writing, if you look at the big web, you know, medical websites about what causes this, that, or the other thing, just about every one of them says the cause is unknown. Doctors don't know what causes da 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 maybe this contributes and maybe that contributes so what causes disease now before you answer that i want to let everybody know that you have decided as an md not to use your medical license you do not prescribe any kind of drugs any kind of surgeries you use only EFT tapping and or the unseen, ther optimal EFT, the unseen therapist. Only that. So talk about why you did that. What causes diseases? The floor is yours. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Yes, I do. I do. I, I mean, I was trained as a doctor. I walked around the hospital in the white coat, you know, the, the, you know, the whole shebang. I stopped doing that because um, early on, I... I just realized that unresolved emotional uh, causes are a really important uh, root cause for disease. Now, obviously not if it's evidently very physical. I mean, if you if you jump from a building, you might break something. That's not emotional. That's just, you know, impact of the uh, what happens. Same goes for car accident as such. I mean, if you're hit by a car, th there's damage to the body. So... But we're talking about all these chronic situations, whether it's symptoms or diseases. And if you really carefully look at how they, uh, when they start, and and you know what is happening, you will you will identify that there's emotional causes to these diseases. And we describe it in our book. I have to point to the right th direction right there. Um, even if I look at, um, you know, mainstream medicine, because we're not here to to say they're all wrong and whatever else. I mean, uh, they really believe in in what they write, and uh, even if they say we don't know what the cause is, they might, you know, say that there's there's a lack of dopamine in the brain, or you know, all kinds of of reasons why these symptoms arise. But even mainstream medicine is realizing that stress, all kinds of stress and all forms of stress play a very important role. So we go, uh, you know, one or two or three maybe steps further and say, no, the cause of physical illnesses and psychological problems is caused by emotional um, problems, unless proven otherwise. And I've not, I mean, in the 24 years that I've been doing it, uh, the way you just described, I just, you, uh, just, that's the wrong expression, of course. I don't just use EFT. I use EFT only. 
um, time and again. That's what becomes clear. If you if you use EFT to, to really clean house on your emotional problems, the, the past ones, the old ones, but also the daily triggers, then things really change and symptoms disappear. So um, I'm really happy to be able to work like this. So I, I literally never prescribe drugs. So I'm not against drugs. I, I'm not advocating that everybody just, you know, stop, you know, drop their medication and not go for an intervention or a surgical intervention or whatever else. But um, for anything that is not acute, for anything that doesn't bring you, bring you to the ER, there is time. Use that time to see for yourself what happens if you use EFT on all your stresses and worries, all the specific uh, situations where you were stressed out and are still carrying around remnants of. That's yeah, what I, I say. What, yeah, I think what you're saying, Gabrielle, <clears throat> is that, yes, the medical profession can help with your symptoms. They've got some drug, they all, all this stuff. Okay, they've got all this stuff. But for most of the diseases that we come across, most of them, there's time. Uh, we don't have to take the drugs immediately. So why not take something like our EFT and OEFT that has such a long, I mean, this is, we haven't just done this yesterday. We've started since 1995, okay? I mean, we have a long, 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 long history of sometimes, oftentimes stunning results using no drugs, no surgeries, no nothing um of the conventional yes. sense and there it is i also want to back up to one thing you said something earlier about the, the doctor may say a cause for some ailment might be a lack of dopamine production in the brain right. yeah okay that that to the doctors might mean cause to me and please comment on this that's just another symptom something causes the lack of dopamine production in the brain. What is that? Something causes that. And that we find with impressive regularity um, can go away uh, if, we, if we locate and find the offending, uh, we call them specific events, but the offending emotional contributor you know, to yes. that. Take care of that, bring peace and relaxation to the system, and it normalizes. And symptoms you had, which are labeled this disease or that disease, start to fade for lack of cause. Absolutely. And I think depression is a very good example because uh, we need to realize that the moment they start researching, you know, what the cause might be. So they have this finding. They say there's, you know, there's a lack of dopamine, for example. However, what they don't take into account is that if in a depressed state your dopamine is low, that's just a symptom. That doesn't prove it's the cause of the depression. And what doctors never um, investigate is how does the body switch back to its normal state once you have resolved the problem the depression the stress everything so they so a finding as such does not prove that there's a causal relationship as we we like to call that so that the dope you know lack of dopamine is the uh, cause of depression it's definitely a temporary situation where the uh, you know dopamine is lacking or is low during the stress phase, but we have to, you know, we basically have to turn it around. Whatever they find may just be symptoms of how the body functions under stress. So if you start working on all the stresses underlying situations that cause you stress and your body, you know, literally gets a chance to rebalance itself, things change, not of themselves, but because the body has been programmed to do that the body has been programmed to help you through stress and then to you know return back to normal to its normal function yeah so you know in, in all this i mean we 
you know, it's easy for us to say, well, then just, you know, do EFT and stay out of stress. But one of the most important focus points is stay out of fear. Because lots of information, lots of information that either the doctor or other therapists gave, give you or, you you know, you find on Internet really scares you. Which is stress, which keeps the body in stress, which is not giving you a chance to recover. So getting yourself out of stress, helping yourself out of fear is so important. For that, again, use EFT. Get yourself out of stress. Okay, one my, one final thing, and we'll close this out, Gabrielle. You and I had a conversation a few months ago, I think. And I got to thinking about medical schools. And if I was a medical school and my job was to properly educate medical students to become doctors and to be the most efficient they could be, now this is a biased comment, okay, but this is my my view. The first year or two of medical school should be dedicated to the emotional causes of diseases and things like EFT and optimal EFT should be taught first. They should be magicians. They should be masters at this and apply it before they ever invade the body with by cutting open and removing something and filling it full of drugs yeah. and radiating it and all that other stuff. Your thoughts, and then we'll close. I totally agree. I totally agree. And so, you know, in, in my trainings, I do have doctors that want to learn EFT. I just, you know, the other day, um, a GP, um, she's, you know, unfortunately, she retired. And now she said, well, now I want to learn about EFT. So I wish only that, you know, they would turn that around. Don't start doing EFT after you've retired. Start with EFT before you do anything else. I totally agree. That's what I do. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Great. Gabrielle, anything more you want to say before we draw the curtain? No, I think this is this about covers it. All right. Well, to our listeners, I hope you found this useful. And we're now going to draw the curtain until maybe another video another time.